Well, here I am again. <laughs> the video did upload. <laughs> so this is the same day, and I'm wearing the same outfit, but you probably will be seeing it tomorrow. I started it before, but Rosie had a barking fit, so I had to stop. So fingers crossed she keeps it zipped while I finish this video. I finished another cardigan. You can see it there. There you go. Yes, I know, another knitted cardigan. But that's what I was doing while I've been missing. It's knitted in Stylecraft Trendsetter Chunky, which I don't know if they still do it because I had it in the shed. It's got a little bit of glitzy gold sparkle, which you probably can't see on camera, but it does. We have to have a little bit of sparkle in our lives, don't we? The pattern, I would imagine it's a Stylecraft pattern, although it just says Special Chunky, and I cannot find anywhere on it that says Stylecraft. It doesn't say anything in the... In the uh, it just says you will need. It says life, chunky life, chunky prints, harlequin, chunky trends, set of chunky, the amounts may vary. I would imagine it's a style craft pattern, but I bought it off Etsy. So of course you get a PDF. It's a cardigan pattern. But it's also a sweater on the same pattern. On the same pattern. Also a sweater. And it's in chunky, and the sizes go from 32 to 34, which actually comes out at 38 and a half, up to 48 to 50, which actually comes out at 54 and a quarter. That's if your tension's correct, of course, and you're on the right yarn. I mean, I've, I've gone more into the fitty things at the moment. I've gone off the big baggy floppy things, you know, that make you look huge. Anyway, I had two balls of it left over. Can't bear to have two balls left over. Oh, she's off again. I'm just going to stop. Rosie, will you stop it? So I can't bear having one left over. Well, not 200 grams. I'm sorry if you can hear Rosie. I really am sorry. So, what did I do? But I goes in the shed and I thought, hmm, brain goes into whatever, remembers that years ago I made a sweater out of this book here, which is a very, very ancient book. As anybody who knows anything about wool and things like that knows that Lister Lee Target has been gone for many, many, many years it's been gone. And I can't find the front of the book now to show you how long it's been gone. It's got a front cover to this book, I can assure you. It has a front cover when I find it. <laughs> there it is. There it is, the front cover. I doubt very much that you'll be able to find this. I've never seen it since I've had this it actually cost 30 pence for the whole book. 30 pence. So you can tell how long I've had it. It doesn't say when it was made. But it has many, many designs in it. Which I have done. Um, it was a yarn called Tibet and Textures. The Tibet was a slightly fluffy yarn and the textures was textured. <laughs> as you may have gathered by the name. Anyway. Those are, where's the pictures? The pictures are not done in colour, are they? Yeah. That one was very popular at the time because it was done with like double DR. Short and chunky was kind of like the fashion at the time. Well, I don't know about that one. I never made that one. But anyway, this is the one I'm making. I've made it many, many times in the past. Many, many times in the actual yarn itself and other yarns afterwards yeah there's another one i made a few times which is rather nice which is that one there that one there anyway goes into the shed finds out i had some stylecraft special chunky 
wonder what it will look like in the pattern. There we go. Looks super, super complicated, doesn't it? But it's super, super easy. It's all to do with doing two rows and then slipping stitches upwards, which makes it sort of like, you know, the honeycomb stitch we talked about in the last video. It's actually looking quite small, but vintage patterns, if ever you find vintage patterns, you will find out that they were meant for much smaller ladies than ladies are today. The largest size is happens to be like about a 38 bust. Oh, she's off again, I do apologise. But I am hoping that it will stretch with blocking. You know, it reminds you of the Grace Brothers, doesn't it? And ride up with Wersa. It will stretch out with blocking. Because my knitting is very slack at the moment because of tension issues with the hand, yeah? Anyway, that's what I'm doing at the moment. Hmm? So that was the first piece I started. Remarkably quick to do. Because, of course, you're only knitting and purling and slipping the stitches upwards. But it does give a nice effect, doesn't it? If anybody's really, really interested, I'll tell you how I did it. You could transpose it into other, you know, thicknesses, as long as you've got a basic pattern. Because it doesn't make any difference to the actual overall size. It's not like sticking a cable in the middle, which means, or moss stitch, which means it alters the size of the garment. This one is basically stocking stitch, but you're just doing the slipping, yeah? So, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I have finished another couple of things which I will say for... Oh, sorry, I forgot to mute the phone. <laughs> sorry, forgot to mute the phone. Um, what was I saying? I've, met another, I've got another two. One crochet, one I've actually finished, which I started before I had my hand issues. Managed to finish it. Had to order another ball of wool, which it was wool, it was actually merino. And I had to pay postage on the flipping thing. But I resisted all temptation into bumping up my order for what I didn't want just to get free postage. I thought, no, Janet, no, don't do it. Just order the one ball. So I managed just about to squeak it out, doing slightly different... Stop it, phone! Slightly different cuffs, puffs, yeah, um, to finish it off. Anyway, I'll show you that on another video. It gives me some content, doesn't it, to show you in future videos, yeah. That's the bag I think I've shown you before. I have a feeling somebody gifted it to me, but I cannot remember who. I can't remember who. It's got a spotty lining inside it, spotty, spotty. Just about the right size. I mean, you know I make big garments. I have no use for these little nitty project bags that hold a pair of socks. Yeah. Somebody actually asked me on one of the videos, did I not make socks? I do, and I have made socks. I haven't made any recently because I've got so many pairs in my drawer and I very rarely wear them. So, you know, I haven't got the sock addiction where you have to knit, 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 knit socks and socks and more socks, you know, because I don't wear the things. Uh, it's not that it, it's not cold enough to wear the socks. I just don't like the feeling of the ridges underneath my feet. I've got neuropathy, which is a contradiction, really, because you think with neuropathy I wouldn't feel things with the bottom of my feet, but I do. I feel the ridges. If I do wear my knit socks, I have to wear them inside out. So the smooth side, stocking stitch, is on the feet and the pearl side is on the top. I know, I'm a weirdo. I've always been a weirdo, always will. My dad always said I marched to a different drummer than everybody else. And that was when I was a child and he was quite right. Yeah, quite right. I don't see things the same way that other people see things, you know. I have my own take on things, you know, which, whatever way. Yeah, you know, you, you know by the way I dress, you know by the way I am, that I am not a conventional 78-year-old lady. Far from it. I'm actually dressed quite conventionally for me, yeah? Left to my own devices, I would be wearing flowing, flowery, I'm still stuck in the 60s or the 70s, you know. 
I'm still a wild child, you know. The body may have given up on me, but the mind is still a wild child, you know. I'm still up there with it, you know, the boho, the hippie, the whatever. I mean, I read an article, somebody said, what is the difference between boho and hippie? And I think boho is like a, a, a kind of lifestyle thing, whereas hippie was just a thing that came and went in the 60s, really. It was all the peace and love and, you know, the smoking, the spliffs and things like that, which I never was into that bit, the free love bit, you know, the all that. No, I was more the bohemian type of thing, you know, the boho way of dressing, the way of thinking, the way of whatever. I was in my element in Carnaby Street, you know, back in the 60s or early 70s. Couldn't afford much, but boy, oh boy, was it inspirational to walk down the street as it was back in the day. None of the tat that you see nowadays, none of the stuff that everybody wears, you know, none of that. It, it, each shop in Carnaby Street was individual. You went from one style to another style and you knew which shop you shopped in because the styles were different. Not like today where somebody picks up on a style and every man and his dog and the cat and the budgie are all wearing the same thing, you know. It's kind of like the Primark mentality, you know, where they make hundreds and thousands of the same blouse, you know. Before, when you used to go to Carnaby Street back in the 60s, 70s, when you had the likes of Mary Quant, Beaver, all those kind of people, everything was individual. You knew where you stood kind of thing. You knew. You could tell when somebody went past you, she's got that dress from such a place. And the thing was, at the time, was they weren't vastly overpriced. They were a little bit out of my pockets, money-wise, because then I was on quite a small wage. But in the general consensus of things, they weren't that highly priced, you know. Um, you could get like a designer original, you know, for... I mean, now you have to pay hundreds and thousands for a designer original. Back then, you know, you, you're paying less than £20, which I suppose was a lot of money in those days. But you paid less than £20 for a Mary Quant original or a Bieber, you know. And if you saved up a little, you could afford one. The woman in the street could afford one. Now you just look at them and think, are they joking, you know? £2,000, £3,000 for that pair of trousers, are they joking? They may be well cut. They may have a designer label, but quite honestly, you know, today's a lot of today's fashion, it could be High Street, it could be m &S. You know, yeah, they do hang like a bit nicer, they do hang a little bit better, but, you know, I, I, I'm an avid watcher, as you know, of YouTube, to anything to do with fashion and I'm watching it, anything to do with boho and I'm watching it. You know, I like to keep up with the, you know, the street fashion. I'm not talking about high fashion, I'm not talking about catwalks, I'm talking about street fashion. What are the women in the street in Milan or Paris is wearing, yeah. I can't afford it. <laughs> I don't dress like it. But I have what they call aspirations, you know. In other words, my brain thinks I'm going to dress like that. My purse says, no, you're not going to dress like that because you can't afford it. Hence, why I crochet. Mm. I like to make things that are not what other people wear. Does that sound big-headed or something? Yeah. That's why I never make a pattern. That's why I never do patterns to sell or to make or anything like that. Because there's no such thing as a new pattern. There's no such thing as a new crochet stitch. They've all been around before. Sorry, sweet little things that think they've invented everything. You haven't, yeah. You know, they're like, look at me with this gorgeous bolero I've invented, I've made, and I'm like, yeah, I made that in the 60s, you know. I've got the pattern in the shed I can show you, yeah. You have not invented it, you've not made it. But of course their audience is 18, 20, 25 year old people. 
and they think, I've never seen that before, because they weren't even born in the 60s and 70s. So to them, it's all new. To them, it's like, oh, wow, she's invented this new style. She's made this new bolero. She's clever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, right, really, you know. <laughs> okay, really, I wore that, you know, back in the 60s, you know. And it just makes me smile because I suppose when I was saying, look at this design when I was in my 20s, look at this design, look at this, what I've made and all that, probably people who were like in their 70s or 80s back then were like, oh yeah, Janet, you know, we wore them back in the 20s, you know. It's like mums, my mum used to say, old times with vinegar. In other words, it's exactly the same with a bit of vinegar on it, yeah? You know, there's no such thing. It's like reinventing the wheel, isn't it? You know, it's just... The... Anyway, this is one reason why I like to be different. I like... To, and this is why I've been so disappointed living around here, is that the charity shops and that don't have anything. Anything remotely unconventional. Remotely stylish. Remotely weird and wonderful, you know. You never see any caftans or anything bold colours. I mean, we went to Affinity, my friend and I, and she's saying, oh, that's a nice dress, that's a nice dress. And I went, I wouldn't wear it. She goes, why? I said, it's knee length. She said, don't you ever wear anything knee length? I went, no, I don't. I've not worn knee length since I was about 20, 25. You know, I don't wear knee length. It's not me. I wear flowing trousers, you know, the palazzo pants or whatever. Long skirts, flowing skirts, preferably in tiers, you know, like three tiers going downwards. And I've just found a bit of fluff off me somewhere on my skirt. I thought my skirt was falling to me. I've got a pile of stuff I've got to stitch up. You know, that I've got a pair of patchwork pants that are coming apart a bit. Another pair of patchwork pants that's about that much too long for me. <laughs> now I need to shorten. I have to search online to find anything a bit weird and wonderful, you know. Had I got the money, oh boy, oh boy, would I dress weird and wonderful. I don't care if people sort of go, what's she got on? I have a load of, well, when I say a load, I've got about eight of the Indigo Moon embroidered velvet jackets. Beautiful, with gold buttons on and everything. And every time I wear them, people stop me in the street and say, oh boy, what a gorgeous jacket you're wearing. But I couldn't. And I'm like, why? Why not? You know, if you like it and you think I look good in it, why can't you wear it? Oh, but I just couldn't. So they walk past with a beige zipper panorak on and I'm thinking, oh my God, live a little. If your brain says wear something bold and wonderful and magnificent, then wear it. You know, don't be stuck in the rut. You know I love my jewelry. I wouldn't be anywhere without my jewelry. If it's a little nitty little chain with a titchy little thing hanging off it, it's not me at all. I mean, I did actually find in my jewellery. I've kept it, not because I'll ever wear it, because the elephant's quite cute. Where's he gone? The little elephant's quite cute. I was thinking I'd put him on something else. I would never, ever wear that round my neck, ever. Hmm. Doesn't make a statement. It doesn't say, this is Janet. It doesn't say that. I'm noted now for my, you know, people always say, what are you wearing? What, what, what necklaces are you wearing? Yeah. I've just sent a whole pile of them to a friend of mine, yeah, because I was not worn them, got bored with them. <laughs> I need something new in my life. Yeah. I like to, you know, there's some old favourites. I've had this one quite some time. Some old favourites that I do wear over and over and over again. But others, I buy them and then I look at them and I think, no, it's not the look I'm going for, it's not the vibe I'm going for, yeah. I do love a load of velvet, as you can see. Oh, look at my elbow, horrible. But it's just not warm. I've got layers and layers on. I've got a little top underneath it. It's just not warm. I was reading again today, a heat wave is coming, and I'm like, Will the heat wave ever touch Fleetwood? 
he seems to go part way up the country and stop. Yeah. I might as well be in the Hebrides in Scotland. I think they have more sun there. I just seem to be in the middle bit that gets all the rain. Yeah. I don't know whether we're close to the Pennines or what. My son keeps trying to convince me that Manchester, which is the rainy city, in case you don't know, had more rain, but I can't remember. Maybe my memories are happy memories of it being sunny and gorgeous and sitting out on my deck in with the dogs. I can remember sitting out most days. Some days maybe I might have had a coat on. But I can remember sitting out there with my coffee, you know, every sort of morning. I'm sorry, Rosie's off again. I had to stop the last video because she would not stop barking. I'm sure she's got two beds. So, we had a delivery. It was from a son. So, some boxes and stuff that went into the garage. And I'm expecting a delivery from Amazon. Which, of course, where would we be without Amazon? Yeah. I'm actually going out on Saturday to sort of a rag thing or other. It's where people sell off their, I don't sell what you know, but their fabric and stuff that they don't want. But I am actually in the market, if I do find any, for some very bold fabric to make some cushion covers. I like very vivid, bright coloured cushions, preferably with tassels on them or something. I've got loads of yarn I could make tassels. I could actually crochet some granny square cushions. But I thought, no, I'll wait till Saturday to see if there's any pieces of fabric, cushion-sized pieces of fabric that I could actually... That's about the limit of my sewing. Turning hems up and making a cushion. It's about the limit of my sewing these days. Used to make on my own clothes. And I wish I could do it again, but it's so messy. You've got fabric everywhere and pins everywhere and you make such a mess. And where I am here, I do not have facilities to cut out and make a mess like I used to. So maybe, you know, I may get back into it one day. You never know what I might do. Watch this space. Because as I can't find, you know, the things that I want to wear, even when I look on eBay, even Shein or Shane or whatever it's called, they look as though they might be my size or my style, and when they arrive, they're a load of rubbish. Flimsy, horrible material. Always that thin polyester stuff. And they look so nice on the mannequins in the catalogue, don't they? And then when they arrive, you think, what a load of rubbish this is. It's the same with that other Chinese thing where it begins with a T, that people are like, oh, it's wonderful, it's mild. Everything I've ordered has been a load of rubbish. Honestly, it's been a load of rubbish. You know, I've had... What did I get off them? Oh, yeah. That's supposed to be a, a basket of sorts. What a load of... It's tatty. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. You could have bought something better in B&M bargains, to be quite candid, you know. I don't know what else I've got in there. Something else I bought in here. But nothing else. No, that, that didn't come from them, I don't think. Or it might have done. That might have been. That's not too bad. But everything's so, so small. I think, I think Japanese or Chinese people must have things that are small. Anyway, that's telling me to shut up. just on cue I get another message yeah right well this will uh, even though I'm wearing the same outfit and recording it on a Tuesday this will be going out on a Wednesday so just like to spread things out a little bit so thank you very much for watching thumbs up subscribe tell all your friends I'd like to grow my channel a wee bit you know I'll never get to the whatever it is everybody keeps every video I watch at the moment I have grown my channel I've got two million viewers or something over there. <laughs> I'd be happy if I get another couple, yeah. Another two videos, another two subscribers, yeah. Anyway, bye for now and I'll see you all very soon. Bye now.